Welcome back to another edition of the ESPC Update, where the Elementary School Building Committee uh, updates us with what goes on in their meetings and other meetings that they have to attend. And with me today is the chairman of the Elementary School Building Committee, is Joe Markey, and Vice Chairman Mike Shepard. Gentlemen, it's been a little bit since uh, we got together, but you guys haven't stopped working at all. And uh, last night alone, we were at the now public hearing that continued. Yeah. So what happened at the Playing Board's public hearing? Sure. So uh, uh, last night, Monday, uh, August 22nd, uh, the, the Planning Board approved the site plan for the new elementary school. And this so is this, is a, this is a huge this is milestone. Huge. So uh, this is a huge regulatory uh, milestone for us. Right. Uh, and this is nothing to be compared with the public meetings that the elementary school board uh, committee has been famous for getting the public input. This is the official public hearing mandated under the bylaws of Hopkins. Yeah, this is the planning board. Uh, the planning board is required to, uh, you know, uh, evaluate any commercial or public building development for uh, against site plan standards. Okay. So, they conduct public uh, hearings to do that site plan review. So uh, it was uh, it was uh, a hearing that opened uh, four planning board meetings ago. Mm -hmm. it, it succeeded through four. Uh, Planning board meeting scheduled throughout July, June. Jul was yeah. it June when it started, or yeah, yeah, June. July? July eleventh, I think, was the first. Okay. July eleventh, twenty fifth, and then uh, two meetings in August, ending last night. Excellent. So, so was there? Because uh, some of the viewers may have uh, watched it. Have there been a lot of public uh, input? Uh, were, were the abutters uh, around? Well, well we we recognize the the. The, the primary abut is right away because where the driveway comes out on the Hayden Road Street, across the street, there are two residences. Yes. And right next door to the driveway, there there is one. So we recognize the, you know, the abutters would have probably the most impact of any, the school would have the most impact on the abutters of anyone in town. Traffic sure. coming out, uh, lights, um, that kind of thing. So we met early on with the abutters. And, and essentially said, look, you know, w we understand and, and we're carrying money in the budget to make some accommodation for it to try to reduce the impacts of the, the, the lights and noise and, and, and that stuff. And, and um, they were, you know, they, they were entirely realistic and, and, you know, recognized right away that, you know, anything we decide on today standing on the sidewalk, it, it could look much different two years from now sure. when we see the reality of people coming in and out of the driveway. So you mean everything that's put on paper doesn't Well, essentially really we, we, kept it, <laughs> we kept it relatively broad. Sure. Uh, we have enough money in the budget to take care of the, the kind of things that they talked about. Yep. Uh, so what we decided to do, and the, and the neighbors agreed, and, and the planning board was, was okay with last night, is you know, we'd wait until probably six months before the school opened and then would address whatever issues there were and then we'd spend the money and then we'd make the accommodations because up until that point you know there's they're not going to really know what what things are you, looking you know at. what what they're looking at or how bad it's going to be or how good it's going to be so we just thought that was the best way and and the abutters um the ant as well as the planning board said that was a good tactic to take. so that's how we settled but to, to go to go back a little bit about you know how this the site plan review process works is, mm -hmm. you know, we, we've been working at, on the school for probably well, close to two and a half years now. You, you, sure. We've, been, we've right. been given these updates at least that long. Three, three and staff, and, three and maybe three years. And and um, <clears throat> so over the time, we've, we've hired uh, the owner's project manager, Compass. He's been on here several times. Um, we, we hired the architect, DRA, um, both DRA and Compass. Uh, gave presentations at the open public meetings we sure. had at, you know, the senior center up at the school, you know, mostly when we had big snowstorms, as I recall. But, the, you know, the pictures all look pretty much the same. Nothing is, is, is really changed, but everything has been fine-tuned. Um, <clears throat> the, the, we, we hired um, engineers to, to look at most of the site plan stuff, to look at the water and the drainage and the conservation issues, which, you know, there, there, there are no small issues there. It's, it's fairly wet property. Um, we looked at the traffic. We looked at, you know, all, all the things related to the site, which the planning board looks at. Sure. The consultants gave us their feedback, and that's what we presented to the planning board. The planning board, on, on, on the other hand, um, 
actually hired consultants as well to look at what our consultants did. Okay. And that was what the meeting was about. Um, and it, in the end, um, there, there were relatively few issues, the, and the issues that were, were, were ironed out last night. Well, what kind of issues were there well, for people at all? Because yeah, sure. They, 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 I mean, well, this, what, what, this is going smoothly, yeah. but there are issues that do come yeah. up. Yeah, I mean, there, there was value in, in, in the review with planning board. I mean, for example, during the course of the meetings with the planning board and the planning board's consultant, Beta, we took a closer look at the turning lane from Hayden Row into the school driveway. Okay. And one of the changes we made during the, the, the course of the hearing was uh, to lengthen the left turn lane as you're headed uh, south towards Milford on Route 85 and sure. you want to take a left turn into the school, we created a left turn lane to turn into the school driveway. Okay. Uh, originally it was a certain amount of feet long. Through discussion with the board's consultant, we agreed that it probably would be better if it was longer, right? So sure. we made some adjustments there. And, and, and I think opinion, that the project make it is as long all the way down to the high school, yeah. the way some of the traffic well, could be. Yeah, that's but a, yeah, that's a that's a different thing, and, yeah. and it's a good thing you <laughs> mentioned that because our our traffic consultant said um, he recommended initially that we put a traffic light at the intersection that would be that, that could control the traffic going sure. in and out. Um, and uh, the planning board at at some point fairly early on said, well, and and it didn't qualify for a tra traffic light under the. It's the, the volume. Department of yeah. Transportation standards. standards. Okay, it sure. would just seem like the right thing to do. And it was relatively expensive. Um, but it, but from our perspective, you know, it, it was there and, you know, it would work well. And the planning board said, well, maybe if it doesn't meet standards, maybe you don't need it. So, again, upon further reflection and talking to the school who actually hired somebody to direct the traffic, everybody agreed that, A, it would be cheaper to have a real person out there directing Absolutely. the traffic. And, 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 it might and, work better. And it might, and it might work better. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> what we decided to do, and, and, and the other part of that that all folds into this is what you just alluded to. Somebody has to, somebody, the Board of Selectmen, somebody has to look at the whole traffic thing along Hayden sure. Road Street because our little traffic light, our little guy directing traffic isn't going to fix what's happening at the high school, the middle school, right. or Hopkins. Or so, Chestnut. Or, yeah, and, and so somebody has to look at the, 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 at the whole thing. So in order to be, you know, a good, good neighbor, we said, look, at, maybe a traffic light will be required at some point. What we'll do is, you know, like we've been doing everything with this access road is we'll try to make an accommodation for some future need. So they're going to put a conduit under the road because the road's going to get torn up anyway sure. for one thing or another. And they'll put a conduit under the road so that it can be used for a traffic light if, in fact, somebody says. In the short term, we're going to have at a minimum on that intersection is lights similar to the one out of Town Hall by Bills where you push a button and you go across and lights flash to warn people that somebody is in that crosswalk. Right. Uh, they'll be on both sides of the road. Um, so, you know, that's, that's about where we are on that. So, it's nice to hear that somebody did think of the whole stretch yeah. because we know the nightmare from Grove to Chestnut. Yeah. Yeah, you have to. You should be looked at once. And I yeah. know yeah. you're responsible for your part. Yeah. Right. Little, and everyone now knows what part is yours <laughs> because they just repaved That's right. from Chestnut to you. Everybody and on the other part. side of yeah. you yeah. to grow. Right. So they, they did a chamber. They did all that. Yeah. So it's nice that that's complete. Now, let's look at the actual patterns. And I know there was yeah. um, uh, projects in the work that Westling uh, two years presented ago. two years ago yeah. to the selectmen about additional lanes towards the high school and yeah. where parameters is and everything. So, so hopefully that all can be done at yeah. once. And so, time so only. yeah, we, we, I want to emphasize, we, we uh, through the discussion with the planning board, uh, the superintendent, uh, we all believe the right way to handle it is that comprehensive look between Grove and Chestnut on sure. Hayden Row. Yep. Uh, I can't say for sure that anyone's picked it up yet. Right. But it needs to be picked up, and people do need to apply pressure to make sure that Town Hall follows through I tell you, great on that. pressure right now, and yeah, I can see it. I just saw it. The stakes are out. Yes. You know, the, the, stakes, the, are, the, the stakes are now out the, showing for the school. what yeah. the real opening should be looking yeah. like. And that's the limited pavement. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you can see how it's widening that, that area. Those poles all move back. Yeah. Sure. Um, so we're working with Verizon and Eversource right now in that regard. 
um, and they they've been really cooperative. Um, so you know, there's a lot of th pieces that have to come together all oh, at relatively yeah. at the same time. Um, but uh, just from at least my perspective, yeah. the, the the neighbors been great. The 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 fact that that you know the it didn't make any sense to pave over our section that we were going sure. to end up tearing anyway. And we have the money and the budget to fix because that was always within the scope of our work. Correct. Um, but the good thing is everybody can see exactly where the impact of this school is going to fall because that's the path that's. Yeah. You know, not yeah, all so much. if you haven't been on Hayden Road much, you will be now that the yeah. school. It used started. to be the pile of school wood. Started. Yeah. It, yeah, it was always where's the entrance? It's all oh, by just Stefano's wood pile. Yeah, but now right. we all know it was the only part that they didn't grind and pave over again, yeah. and that's where the new entrance. And that will all again meet and match yes. uh, when the work yeah. is finally complete. So now that they considered all of. Um, uh, the, your traffic issues and so forth are, are now being hammered out. Uh, anything else did they pick up at last night's uh, hearing that or yeah, last night this hearing? Last process? night hearing the, that was one of the open issues. Uh, there was a fairly lengthy discussion about uh, traffic circulation in the site okay. after you come in the driveway. Uh, signage in particular related to traffic circulation should, uh, what's more effective? Uh, painting white arrows on the ground or little signs that say right turn only, left turn only, do not enter. Uh, and uh, actually our uh, project uh, architects and designers had a different point of view than beta, uh, but in the end you're going to see a mixture of uh, sure pavement both. markings and little signs. Right. Yeah. So, so, so it's not going to be like getting into Logan with all the signs with every yeah, 10 yeah. feet? Telling you where things yeah, are. Yeah, departures only and oh, arrivals. Sure. Uh, yeah. Hopefully not. Right. Hopefully not. I mean, because yeah. I mean, uh, so hopefully the, the, I, I love the idea of the painting. However, most of the school year it is in the winter, yeah. and that what what, what happens is you know what, once you get uh, after the uh, first couple of days dropping your kids off, picking them up when the principal's out there waving you which direction. <laughs> the, uh, after that, you're on autopilot. And you kind of <laughs> don't much. you don't even see the signs Absolutely. or the markings, but Everybody we want to make sure it. it's uh, safe and well marked. And I think especially you know, for the is. first time visitors, because granted this is an elementary school, but this is also going to be a public building, and you're going to have your uh, gymnasium being That's used for the basketball leagues which have yeah. visitors from all over not just sure. the tri-valley towns yeah. but even further yeah. and so yeah you have to look at it from the first time visitor I, yeah I so. what, one of the other things that we're, we're excited about is the lighting on the site uh, is is a new more modern lighting than we've had at any of the other school buildings in town. E even the replacements. So we have LED, LED yeah. lights. Those are LEDs to replace. Uh, sure. yeah, yeah. So yeah, like so we'll have LED lighting on the site, uh, 15 foot high lighting, sure. uh, per the planning board requirement, and uh, the ability to create zones of lighting and dim or undim to different levels as needed across oh, the site. That's great. That's a big so it offers deal. a lot that's, more that's a flexibility uh, throughout the I mean, site. I mean, the money savings alone with LED, yeah. as we've known over the years with the mercury vapor and fluorescent, now that you're doing LEDs, you do have the savings, but you're even going to create a bigger savings uh, by able being to, able to... Able to dim them when we don't need the, the full... Yeah, and, and the site is uh, going to retain quite a vegetative buffer around the entire school site, so it won't really be visible from uh, Hayden Row. So, uh, you know, yeah, in terms of I, visual impact not of like different the high things. school. Like the high school yeah. because, uh, you know, granted with the high school, when that came in, the high school wasn't bad. The uh, basketball and tennis courts, those lights, I lived across the street. I didn't yeah. have to turn on my lights in the apartment until after 10 when those lights went out. Yeah. And the house down back, Colonial Way, yeah. was li you lit like up that. like a Christmas tree because yeah. of the overspill. Yeah. Yeah. Now, they replace those lights and everything is centered. Constantly. Even the traffic lights, because the uh, traffic lights would shine right in the bedroom window. Yeah. I know when it was green, I knew when yeah. it was red. Yeah. And so all those now that have been changed, you don't have that. Yeah. And right. how, about, how about noise from the AC units? That was a big issue with the high school. When the school was built in September, everything was great, it was nice. Then summer came along and it was deafening from across the street. I mean, uh, any consideration with the HVAC the, with the, the, uh, the, the noise when we get from the high school when we've talked to the high school folks is from the chiller that, which is out back by the gym right. and the chiller runs through the summer pretty much consistently 
Um, we have a we have a s different system. Uh, rather than one big chiller, we have smaller units that are placed where you use them. Because part of the thing is, our school is going to be a lead accredited building, so you got to save energy in right. case you can't spell it. Sure. Um, but the chiller noise is unmistakable. So what we did is we had um, another engineering firm look at the units that were placed on the roof and tell us what the noise would be like out on Hayden Row Street. Um, the closest one is the bird flies was 532 feet, as I recall. Yeah. And it would be about 30 decibels, which is probably about as loud as I'm talking now. Sure, um, I think it they, wouldn't they, be they actually had a table that showed 30 decibels more like the volume of a whisper in a library. Sure. Yeah, so and uh, it was less than the traffic noise. It was less than, you know, and then, of course, the the distance out to the entry, which was open, where the sound would probably most likely emanate, was over 700 feet, which was more. So I think from the sound perspective, we're going to be fine. Um, the units are smaller than the high school, so hopefully they'll be less. They'll be they'll be a lot more quiet. Any uh, other impacts that were pointed out? Yeah, I mean the sound will be a lot less uh, than the sound of traffic that goes up and down Hayden Road today, sure. <laughs> for yeah. example. Sure. Right. And this has got to be. And this, the school's got to sit back so Quite far. Then the traffic noise isn't going to affect what goes on with the daily business. Yeah, the closest school. point in the school is around 500 feet from Hayden straight, Row. You yeah. know, if you went straight out from the school to the to probably Hilltop. Oh, that's and, excellent. And uh, the other thing I uh, you, I might want to mention is we've been working closely with Parks and Rec, primarily through the through the EMC Park and opportunities it affords the school as well as EMC Park. Mm -hmm. uh, they've been super cooperative. They've been great to work with. And um, it, what we ended up with was an uh, 18 foot wide road, which is was will be gated. Uh, you'll be able to walk on it. The kids will be able to ride bikes on it. Uh, parents will be able to walk through from EMC Park to the school and vice sure. versa. However, there'll be no vehicular traffic. That's going to be limited to emergency use only. The police and the fire department, as you probably know, and the, but the viewers might not, have keys to what they call knox boxes. That's how they get into empty buildings at night. And mm -hmm. the gates will have a knox box. They'll open it, they'll unlock the gate, and they can drive in. Uh, it was important from a security perspective for not only school, but I think it will be helpful as far as the MC Park. Um, there may be, because the little tote road, this little 18-foot road goes in there, there'll be some adjustments to the kids uh, I call it a pile of dirt. Um, uh, it depends on your perspective. You can call it a mountain. The, king, the king of hill mountain. Yeah, the yes. king of hill mountain. <laughs> king of that, hill mountain. That'll yeah. be adjusted slightly because sure. the road comes pretty close to it. Um, but it, uh, I think it'll work out, you know, well for everybody. So, but parks and recs have been great. I think, you know, having the school facility so close and the proximity of the school for parking for, you know, the big events like the Little League tournaments and stuff, it'll work out great. And vice for versa. Right? And, yeah, and you know, because you, you know that you yeah. have just a yeah. little event over here. Yeah. yeah. Everyone has to bring three cars per yeah. kid. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. mother, yeah. father, and grandparents. Yeah. And, being a, and being a small community, I think, you know, this one hand washes the other thing works works for really, Always right, has. Right, I mean, works really being well. on the Little League board for many years, and when we started yeah. the summer tournaments, yeah. The high school was very open in yeah. allowing us to park yeah. uh, overflow, which yeah. kept it off the road, which was sure. very narrow, yeah. and it, it kept them off the street. Yeah, so I, yeah, so I, mean, I think it will work out well. And we talked uh, briefly about um, the 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 trails committee and the trails. Uh, they're they're working with the Todaro uh, Irvine group for future needs in terms of routing a trail around the school property that will hopefully end up going through the park as well. Um, so they've been very helpful and, and um, you know, we promised them we wouldn't throw something up that would block their right. plans. So they, they, they're going to work around the school and uh, I think I'm pretty excited about it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we, we said from the beginning, you know, in all the workshops we did that we want to not only build a school but build a resource for the community. Sure. So we're proud of the constructive work we've done with Parks and Rec and Trails. And even planning board, yeah. right? It was a difficult hearing for us. Uh, it extended a little longer than we started to get a little nervous against our time frame. Uh, right. We need to get 
past this well, now? Would, or would you we say that's one of your longest, uh, and I'm not going to well, use the term obstacles, but more of a challenge? Well, uh, because what, your schedule you yeah. seemed like you were right on schedule the whole time, and it, and it didn't seem like that you were struggling we're, to make the time. Yeah. Was this just a little longer we're, than you we're, thought? We're on schedule. If it had gone later, we were at risk of not being able to start work this fall, which sure. would put us at risk of not opening. Oh, we, be we are on schedule, so we will be able to start work this fall, Great. and we're still on track to open in 2018. And though challenging with the planning board, you remember I was on planning board for Absolutely. a while. So I empathize and I understand from their perspective. First of all, they don't want to make a mistake. So they want documentation to cover so they don't make a mistake. So lots of documentation, lots of questions, and we can, we're able to document everything. Sure. Secondly, they have to be fair, right? So after a while on planning board, you do start to feel a little bit like the bad guy. You're not Santa, right? You're telling people you can't do this, restrict hmm. this, pull this right. back, do it this way, not that way. Uh, so if you're going to be that way to one applicant, you got to be that way to everybody, whether Absolutely. it's a town board or not. Absolutely. And so we experienced that from the other side of the table. And I, again, I empathize, I understand, and uh, I do understand that the planning board members have the best interest of the town at heart. And, 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 and they understood our schedule. Right. And they worked with us to do what they could to close the hearing and approve the plan and keep us on schedule. Which the people at home should know and, and realize that they should be happy that the planning board takes this effect with you. That, oh, it's a town thing, it's a school, oh, let's just let it go. No. They're the same. It's very consistent. They do their jobs, yeah. just like you do in your jobs. Yeah. Everyone yeah. has their own charge, and they're charged with the planning. Right. Yeah, making it a little more complicated for them. Massachusetts law does treat schools a little differently, sure. right? So planning boards are restricted from regulating certain aspects of projects. Uh, but again, we, we got through it, and we made lots of good compromises with uh, their consultants, and I think that, uh, as we've promised all along, it's, it's going to be a project the community is going to be very proud of and happy to see progress. Well, that's great. So we're getting near the end of our time, and you. Uh, and again, today is uh, is Tuesday, August twenty third. ESBC meets tomorrow night that's right. at yeah. seven at six thirty. Six thirty tomorrow. Six thirty of the uh, lower town hall. Low level of town hall. Yeah, we're already kind of deep into planning the next set of activities, which Mike can probably explain. Best. Yeah, the the what's been going on behind the scenes is the ESBC is a subcommittee that consists of the 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 contractor, the architect, um, and they're into the, at this point they're, they're into the selection of uh, what they call file sub bidders. And um, we're, we're again meeting tomorrow over in Holliston, I think it's at one o'clock, uh, to talk about this because we're ready to go out to bid for what will be the first phase, which will be the site clearing and grubbing, uh, excavation and foundation up to, and it's a kind of a wash now whether it includes the steel. Um, the, uh, most people going by can expect to see probably in a month or so machines out there cutting the wood just like you'd see for a, a, a building site for a big subdivision. Uh, you'll see machines out there grubbing the stumps and the rocks and stockpiling the, the valuable rocks, which is sure. most of the field stone walls because we intend on using those again. Um, but it's going to be, you know, kind of rough and dirty at, at, at the beginning. Then there'll be excavations for footings and foundation, and that'll continue right through the winter. And we expect that you know, the steel delivery will be in February or March of next spring, which will put us in a good place as far as weather goes to get the building closed in over next summer. Um, in the meantime, a lot of stuff happens that's not so so charming as building a building as we got to get utilities under the roadway. Right. We got the roadway, as you, you may or may not recall, is, is three lanes wide. Um, we're going to get the utilities um, in on, and pave probably a third or half of that just so that we can have access in and out of the site for not only the construction vehicles but emergency vehicles as well should the, should the need arise. Um, but uh, so that's where we are right now. The, uh, we've been through, um, the, just submitted the 65% the CD drawings, uh, uh, which 
CD means the construction drawings. These are the drawings mm -hmm. that you build the building from to the MSBA. The 100% is due in about another month or so. Um, the MSBA has reviewed them, sent their comments back. Our consultants are reviewing the comments and adjusting the plans accordingly. Um, the other important factor that people should know is we're in this for a, a fixed dollar amount. Um, and I think that our last meeting, we either just finished or just going around over, you know, we had, you know, site conditions that were more than we thought. So there were some things that we had to change to just keep the budget on budget. Okay. Um, the good news is at this juncture, and there'll be one more review, um, we're right on budget. So on budget, on time. Which is perfect. Good thing. Now, we're getting ready to end, and I know I always ask this question of you, and I know you guys always turn when I say, it. you know, anything that, you know what's going on with the center school. I'm not going to ask you that this time, because we already know yeah. you have nothing to do with it. However, they are putting together, they are accepting the input on the Irvine Tadaro property, the leftover. Um, is ESPC have any, real quick, any, any um, subcommittee or, or any recommendations for that? For the additional, yeah, uh, yeah I, I, I think uh, we, we'll we 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 will have an interest in um, things like um, in the future, depending mm -hmm. on expansion in the school. Uh, one topic that came up last night: maybe we should reserve some space, or ask that committee to see if it's possible to reserve space for things like additional satellite parking. Gotcha. Things oh. like that may come up. So you're not, you're not left out of the whole thing, which is no, great. Right. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much for taking the time out. And since you're meeting tomorrow night, yep. I'm sure we'll have you back in here in a few more weeks. Yep. And okay. everybody's welcome to come tomorrow night. And uh, we're, we're happy 630, to 6.30, town hall, lower, lower level. Yeah, lower level. Not the basement. We're the lower level. <laughs> Excellent. Gentlemen, thank you again. And, again. and uh, folks at home, thanks again for tuning in for another edition okay. of the ESPC yeah. Update. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Michael. what it takes. Will you make a difference? Always an adventure. Police and fire working together. Utilizing the latest technology. Do you have what it takes?